Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. You startled me. You like my shirt? Hopefully you get the joke. Well, hey. Uh, I gotta load this thing up. We're gonna go rescue an engine for the upcoming uh, farm show this weekend. My favorite little show. So I'm gonna wrangle this thing in here and get headed down the road. I'll catch up with you when we get a, a recover the engine. Whew, I'm out of shape. Well, we're here in a rather unassuming neighborhood, and uh, we'll take you inside to where this engine we're going to recover at, and what is part of where I grew up at. This is my dad's shop, and quite a bit of things in here that uh, we will go over at another time, because we're here to get a particular engine dug out for the little tractor show. Well, it's not really little anymore. Uh, tractor shows coming up this thing's been sitting back here for a few years and hadn't been seen the light of day because of that big steam engine sitting there so we got a bunch of stuff to move to get this thing dug out and that's going to be the process that uh it's about to begin so we had a little bit of time to think about this how we we're going to get this thing out and the original plan was to come out through here through this little section here but after doing some measuring with that clutch pulley on the side getting it out through and then right through this area here ain't going to work plus we have all this stuff to move uh, and to get around so i think what we're going to end up doing is moving all this little stuff that's a little lathe and then toolboxes and then kicking this wheel in and uh hopefully be able to drive this thing out i brought my pallet jack uh for the rear of this to lift it up because the steering axle's up there to put underneath the rear of this and be able to spin it over hopefully uh, to get it lined up to come out so we got some stuff to move here and get this thing uncovered and get it outside and then uh, once you get it outside get it fired up and then still has to make the journey down to the showgrounds so yeah it's gonna be a long day we're going to double check our measurements here and uh, make sure it's actually going to fit through this way so we'll measure the width measure what we got between here and the wall and maybe don't have to move this because that would be kind of nice if we didn't have to spin that looking like 66 inches it's going to be tight this, that might have to get moved. Oh well, it's easier on the other side. This piece here and the next piece I'm going to drag out is the boiler sheet from the steam engine. Put new sides in it and this is the old one. It was eight out real bad around the stay bolts, a lot of cavitation. So that'll be for another another video, but this is uh, part of the steam engine that's been replaced. Well, there, phase one complete. Looks a lot cleaner in here now. Time to move all this crap.
Well, that's the cleanest this garage has looked in a long time. Well, new plan of attack. I'm gonna get the uh, pallet thingy brought back here, put it underneath, and get this thing shifted over and try to drag it out this way um, and try to work it around this wheel without, I'm gonna try to not have to kick this wheel in to make space. But if that doesn't work, then obviously you have to move that wheel in, which is more of a hassle than I really wanna get into, but. Well, we made it this far and we ran into our first snag right there. So we're going to go floor jack, put it underneath the front of this and kick it over a little bit. And I think we're doing all right here as far as getting around with the wall and this, as long as this doesn't get in our way. So we'll get this thing kicked over some and uh, see if we can keep working this thing out. There's the current problem. Hopefully, we got a solution. Well, we can't measure. It don't fit. Up against the wall there. Up against there. So we're gonna just do a little tappy tap tap right there on the piece of wood and try to move those wheels out of the way because that's all the further we gotta go and then the front axle is narrower than the rear. It'll walk right out of there. So if we can get that wheel on the engine to come this way a little bit, open that up, all we need is about a quarter inch. And uh, hopefully that'll fix a problem. That's all we needed, hopefully. Well, the old girl's free. Minimal issues. You know, measure, measure five times, still be wrong. Whatever that saying is. But yeah. Got some more shop space in here. Kind of lay down some more parts for the steam engine and get back to working on it. And uh, I'm going to spin this thing around. Drag it outside and see if it'll fire up. Well, isn't that neat looking? Had this thing for a while. Hadn't seen the light of day in probably about five years though. Uh, probably had it 15. Bought it over in Pennsylvania with a bunch of other engines. When we found it, it was laying on its side uh, next to a barn. I think I got pictures of it somewhere. If I can find them, I'll throw one in. But uh, find them, I'll throw one in. But uh, it was stuck and 
didn't have the cart. The cart was a Cool Springs purchase years ago. It's a factory uh, wit cart. Would have been a saw rig. Would have had a saw blade on the back for cutting like cord wood. But uh, it's pretty neat, especially with the uh, seat up there and the foot stand. Um, be able to sit on top of the engine and have the horses pull you along. We got the Asian horse there, but uh, yeah, got it unstuck and it actually runs really, really, really good. Dad made a pot muffler for it because this sucker's got some bark and that quiets, quiet it, uh, it, it, uh, quiets it down quite a bit. But uh, I'm going to go through this thing like you always do. It's been sitting for a little bit. Make sure everything's free, nothing stuck, valves, yada, 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 like I always preach. And uh, get it oiled up and try firing it up. No reason it shouldn't. Um, it sat inside this whole time, so unless the magnetor's gone weak, it should just fire right up. Everything's oiled up. Haven't tested the mag yet. Make sure it's got spark. I'm just going to assume that it does. Um, it needs still need to put gas in it. But this thing's got all kinds of compression. You you can't pull it through. Um, you got to be like Hercules or something to turn this thing over without releasing the compression on it. So I'm going to cycle this thing over a couple times. Get some oil on that piston. and uh, explain some of the operating system. Intake valve up here. You got your exhaust valve down here with this big, huge, long rocker arm. It goes back to the cam. It's all the way back here. And then uh, governor here. It's got a little detent arm down here, if you can see it. That's what uh, makes this thing hit and miss. And then the magnetor is right here. This is your mixer. Like I said, this is a kerosene engine. Uh, you would have started it on gasoline and then flipped it over to kerosene if I'm thinking right actually I might be wrong oh well you'll let me know if I am but anyway started on gas flip it over to kerosene and then I was wrong when I did mention that's why I was questioning myself this here was actually because this is a kerosene engine um, kerosene will knock when it gets hot so if this engine got hot this is your water injection this would actually there's another fuel tank down here but it's not right this would have went from the hopper on the other side. There's a little uh, brass fitting that this would have pulled water out of the hopper and sucked it in to reduce the knock on that kerosene if it's into start knocking if it got too hot. So yeah, this is the kerosene model. And uh, like I said, it's a 12 horse headless style wit. It'd be in the early teens probably. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw some gas in it and see if it'll run. I'm going to take the top off of this and show you there's a float in here, a little copper float that has a ball and seat down here that this fills up with your fuel and then that float pulls up and, and stops the flow of fuel from this gravity feed tank. Kind of neat setup. It's kind of neat to see and then uh, the engine will draw from this bowl in through the rest of the intake and uh, fire off of that but just to Kind of a neat little thing. Have a engine that's got a little float on it, kind of like a modern day carburetor. Well, it would have been originally a, a copper um, float in there, but this cork's in there now. 
So I'll turn the gas on. You can see it filling up. Here we go. And as you can tell, he pushed down on it, more fuel comes in, lift up on it, shuts fuel off. That's kind of neat. Different. The starting procedure on this is pretty straightforward. You take your hand and you completely choke this thing off so it sucks enough gas inside that enormous cylinder. And uh, it normally just takes right off. So let's see if that holds true. That should work. <laughs> too much gas in it. No, the exhaust is stuck. Oh, really? Yeah. Could be now. Sometimes things don't go according to plan. I need to put a spring on the Third time's charm. Well, 
I'm not sure what's. All right, so what's happening is the exhaust is staying open, and it's it's this thing here. This is the detent, and it's leaving the exhaust open. That's why it's not firing again. Had a real light spring on this uh, for this thing to run really slow, and I think because this thing's on a little bit of a downhill slope that it's forcing these weights in the collar that it moves this way and not allowing it to push on this like it should be and it's allowing this thing to stay cocked over and holding the exhaust valve open so put a different got a different spring on there which will speed this engine up uh, faster than i want it to run but for the sake of getting it running this should do the trick all right attempt number four Definitely blowing the cobwebs out of her. up with a spring it fired up pretty easy kind of how I expected it to but uh, yeah 
Time to get her down to show. It will run slower, but I think I'll mess with it down there and uh, change some springs around and things like that when it's on level ground. But uh, like I said, time to get it down to show. It's about a 20 minute drive. So I guess we're gonna find out how good the axles are on the cart. Cause, uh, we're just gonna take her down the highway as she is. So I'll catch up with you in the next video at the show. And uh, as I always say, go out and get your hands dirty. <laughs>